Hello, my name is Ben and on this YouTube channel I document my own print on demand journey. Today I'd like to talk about the upload process on Zazzle. So I'd like to give you a short tutorial on how you can upload to Zazzle because the upload process on this platform is a bit more complex, a bit more complicated, takes a bit longer than for example Redbubble or Spreadshirt. And if you are looking for a, let's say a Redbubble alternative or Amazon Merge alternative, Zazzle might be a good option. I've generated a few sales in the last few weeks and months, even though I only started like, yeah, three months ago on, on Zazzle. I'm quite happy how it's going now. I don't actually have that many designs on Zazzle compared to other platforms. I believe if I had, I would probably have um, really good sales, like probably on a similar level to Spreadshirt. And if you don't know my other videos, I've, you know, I've started uploading to Spreadshirt, I think towards the middle or end of November, 2020. And I pretty much now see a, yeah, um, let, let's say a level of sales of 60, $70 a month only on Spreadshirt Europe, which is quite good. But I guess, you know, probably the, the designs on Zazzle, the ones that I have on Zazzle, is probably only like 20% of what I have on, on Spreadshirt. And on Zazzle, I now see, yeah, between, I would say, six, seven, eight dollars, maybe ten dollars a month. So if I had, I, you know, if I had the, the same amount of designs on Zazzle, I believe my sales would be much higher as well. But the problem with Zazzle is that the upload process is a bit more complex, a bit more complicated. Now, that's why I started using an upload tool. As you can see here, this is an automated upload tool called Flying Upload. And you can find a link in the description. And I'm currently using this to upload my designs to all of these platforms. Zazzle is one of them. And Zazzle used to take really a long time to upload because they've got a um, basically a checker implemented that checks when you automate your uploads and you have to manually confirm that you're not a robot. But Flying Upload also offer a way around that. So since I've started using Flying Upload, with this um, sort of robot confirmation application, it really works well. And if you have a question about this, let me know. You can test Flying Upload if you follow the link in the description. They've got 30 uploads per month for free. And if you want to upload more, which I recommend, then yeah, also you can use the um, the code in the description and get a discount. It's an affiliate link, but if you do it, it would be great because then you support this channel and I could put more content out. That's just uh, a side note here. I guess if you want to upload to more platforms than just one or two, because I guess if you do it manually more, um, if you do it manually on all of these platforms, you, you can't even do it on a, on a day. It, ju it just takes too long. So you have to automate it if you want to spread yourself um, thin on all these platforms. If you want to spread your designs onto different platforms, you have to automate it. That's just my opinion. You don't have to do it. That's why I show you a manual way of how to upload to Zazzle. Now, I, I assume that you've already subscribed or yeah, signed up onto Zazzle. Zazzle is, is a free platform. It doesn't cost you any money. It works very similar to Spreadshirt or Redbubble. Just the upload process takes a bit longer. And what you need to know is, um, well, it has more monthly traffic than Spreadshirt. I think significantly more, twice or three times more visitors per month than Spreadshirt but it also has significantly less than Redbubble. But then more traffic doesn't necessarily mean more sales. I know many people are doing well on Spreadshirt. They're not doing so well on Redbubble because also it means that the competition on Redbubble is just much higher. And so Zazzle might be a good compromise. It might be the middle way. And I, I you know, I still get um, more, more and more positive about Zazzle because my sales are increasing as well while I upload more and more. Now I've created a new store here on Zazzle. You can have several stores under one account. On Zazzle, I believe there is a limit. You can upload 100,000 100, products to one store. I might be wrong, but I think that is the case. Um, but it is quite, it takes you quite long to get there anyway. So what, what do you do if you want to upload a product? So, you know, creating a store is quite simple. I won't go into that. Um, if you have a question about that, post in the comments. I'm happy to do a video on that as well, but it's a separate process and it will make the video too long. So if you want to now upload your design, you have to go to in your store here. You go to products 
And there are two different ways of how you can actually create a product. There's the quick create button, which is basically, yeah, you use a, a template that you already have, and then it saves you some time to create new products. But I'm going to show you how you can actually create a new product from scratch, because that is probably the more complex bit. And that is what takes you a bit longer as well. Now, if you click on that, then what you can do, you can, you have all these, these products here, which are available. So I guess if you just want to, let's say, sell a t-shirt, then you click on, on t-shirts here. And then you get the selection of all the different t-shirts, which are available. I recommend you go to, um, see all templates here. And what I normally do, you know, I normally use, I put my designs generally on dark shirts, uh, or on dark backgrounds. I very, very rarely, pretty much never use a, a light background. And I do that because dark backgrounds, well, designs on dark backgrounds sell better. At least that's what I've always heard. And that's why I've started to do this from the beginning. And I guess because everybody's saying that I'm doing that as well. Now I could do it the other way around, but then it would mean I have to change all my designs, which I'm not going to do. Maybe one day <clears throat> I would try put them on, on light backgrounds as well. But I recommend you just to use this one here, which is a man's dark basic shirt. And what you need to know about Spread, uh, about Sazzle is that, well, if you want to upload two different products, you have to, um, <laughs> yeah, you have to upload individually to each product. It's not like Redbubble where you have, let's say one dashboard and you have like 50, 60, 70, 80 products in there and you just upload the design and change the size on them. No, you have to manually add each product, which is why I use an upload tool. Now you click on that. Now, and what you get here is you get this template here. What you do is in, 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 you know, I assume you already have, let's say Amazon merge designs or your PNG file. Then you go to click add image. You can also just add a text. So they've got a sort of a t-shirt creator here, but what I normally do is add image. And then I, well, I just use one, which I've got saved here, but you just go upload images. You can also upload from your phone and then you just upload a PNG file. So all of these here are PNG files and you just click on it or you upload it and then you, you put it in, in this, um, yeah, design. So you can just use a 5,400 by 4,500, for example. Now you can see how it looks on the shirt. You can see the actual borders here. You know, you don't want to go, go maximum to the, you just want to make sure it's, it's well, you know, it's readable. If they, if people scroll through the pages, they can actually read it. Recommend don't make it too big. So people are not overwhelmed, but you know, make it a decent size like this here, for example, you can also make it a bit small and you can position it as you want. I recommend don't do it down here. I, just, I guess people don't want to have it on their belly generally. So if you have it a bit higher. And again, this is not like the best design, but just, just really for the purpose of video, of this video to show you how it, um, how it can work. So yeah, you pull it into the right, um, yeah, you center it and, and these, um, these grid squares here help you to center it. So you want to make sure that it's pretty much in the middle. And also, as you can see here, pretty much like Canva, it gives you a, um, a line here, a vertical line that shows you when it's in the middle. You can also do it the other way if you want to have it horizontally. Uh, the horizontal line as well. So that's pretty much centered now. I recommend you always do it a bit higher, but that's just personal preference. And then you're good to go. Now, what you can do, you can actually add a text. You can add some icons here. So they do have a con, they do have like a, a small, let's say, image creator software here. You know, these are not the greatest ones, and I recommend you use Canva or Vexels or Placid to create your designs. Um, but just as a side note, so you can add a text here as well. It, it has a few, you know, possibilities, but you know, this is not what this one is about. I just want to show you how you can upload your design. Then you click on done. And this is basically how it looks like on a shirt. Now, what they also have, they have videos. They show you the, the shirt or design from different angles. Now, what you can then do is you click on sell it and it takes you through this, um, to this, uh, yeah, page here where you can actually add your title, you know, a category. So it's very similar to, let's say, Redbubble Spreadshirt in terms of editing it. So you click on the title, you add a title, like in this case it was just plant-based vegan, uh, yeah, shirt. You can call it, you can actually add the, um, the name of the product here, like T-shirt, 
because you have to do it again for a different product. If you want to put it on a mug, you have to do it for a mug. Um, so yeah, again, you know, you can add some keywords like um, veganism, veganism powered by plants, or something like that. That's up to you. You can actually see there's a maximum limit of, of I can't actually type more in. So yeah, there's a limit of um, number of characters in the title. Then you add your, they suggest a category here. You can choose another one, but I recommend you just use the one that they um, suggest here because it's t-shirt. Now you add a description. So add this wonderful vegan shirt to your wardrobe if you want to promote animal welfare. But you know, again, with description, you want to make sure there are as many keywords in there as possible. So it works well in terms of SEO. Then what you can do, you can also sell this. You can select if you want it, have it white only, black only, classic printing. I mean, I generally select all options, men's only, you know, black and white only, kids only, but I generally select all options. I make very general designs, evergreen designs, not very specific for certain groups. I generally make it available for everybody, uh, but that's up to you because I want to spread myself, you know, I want to make sure that everybody it would potentially buy this shirt. Um, so then you can select events. Uh, to be honest, I don't know events and occasions. So this is if it's, for example, a birthday shirt or for holidays, whatever. If there's a special holiday, this might be for. So let's actually see. I have never checked, but let's see if there is maybe something like Veganuary in here. Uh, but to be honest, I don't know. So you, you could just select occasions or other whatever um, recipient so again you can select for pets for kids for him for her I generally select for anyone and then you can make it more specific here as well but I just say for anyone so it's quite quite nice you can select coach co-worker customer employee but I just select for anyone then you have your store category and now this is my store here obviously um, if you have several, I think you can add categories into your store. So it is like an album on, I think, Public. They allow you to add albums or um, Redbubble. I just leave it blank here for now. And then you, this is very important in terms of tags for Redbubble. You can't just type in like, if I want to have a tag that's called plant-based and I add that, you can see it's two different words. So what you have to do on says you have to make it, you know, you have to make these, um, um, symbols here so you can in the plant-based so this will mean it's one word or what you do you can add a, a plus symbol between them plant base which we also recognize that these are now connected and as you can see here oh because I had that tag already so plant plus based we'll make sure that plant-based is one tag yeah so you can have several words in one tag you just may, you may need to make sure that you make a plus symbol between the different words if you just have a, a space uh, between the words, these will count as different tags. Now, there is a maximum of 10 tags you can use and 500 characters in total. Then you have to make sure that it's suitable for your audience. So you have to select if it's universal or, you know, for a certain age group. Well, this is universal. Product visibility, uh, public. I normally make it public because everyone can see it. I want to make sure people find it on the marketplace. So Zazzle allows you to generally list your products on the marketplace. It's not like TeePublic where they are hidden, which is very annoying, or Threadless where they are hidden as well. All of this is just useless. So Zazzle is a platform that works with organic traffic, which is great. Um, show customize it button. Now this is when you want to allow them to uh, yeah, add some customization and change things on there, which I generally leave on because if someone wants to add another text or so, that's fine. And then the royalty. Now, in terms of royalty, as you can see here on this side, they recommend royalties between 10 and 15%. I currently select my royalties. I think they are around 12.5%. I start at 7.5, but it is generally quite low, actually, especially if you sell stickers or just a mask or a greeting card. So I've now increased that to 12.5%. And I think you can go up to 15%. I think if you go higher, they charge you. I'm not 100% sure, but, well, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I haven't tried going above 15%. But, you know, I generally select 12.5. They actually start you with 5 for, for some reason. Um, but, yeah, 
let's say 7.5 or 12.5 you just type in what you want here um, you can see it changes actually the product price obviously so let's see if I put in 20 what happens it works as well so it might just work <laughs> so but anyway I stick with what they recommend 12.5 percent is pretty much the average and then here it says, since this is a new product, you have 24 hours to finalize your royalty percentage. So changes after that go into effect on the 20th of every month. So within the first 24 hours after posting this product, you actually can, um, or you actually have to, um, yeah, you can change your, your price, but yeah, if, if you decide to change it afterwards, you can only change it, you know, they will only change the price once per month. And all you then have to do is to post it. And if you want to put that design then onto another product, you have to, you know, do that again for, let's say, a shirt for women or a mask. So that is very time consuming. And I know many people do that and they do it manually. And many people just put their designs on masks or just on shirts. So, and that's absolutely fine. If you just want to stick with the product groups, which are like selling like the shirts, I mean, masks, and I think they are the high runners, masks, shirts, maybe stickers, and maybe mugs, that's fine. You can do it manually. But if you want to upload to all of these products that you can actually see uh, that I showed you already, then what, what I recommend you do is use an upload tool. Um, and the advantage is, and that's probably why I see uh, my sales going up on Zazzle. If you use an upload tool like like Flying Upload, I'm not sure actually who else offers uploads to, to um, Zazzle. I think Merch Titans do, but it didn't work for me. Flying Upload works quite well. Now, if I use, as you can see here, I mean, it now, it gives me 4,617. I've actually, the designs that I've put in here, they um, will equate to 4,617 products on Zazzle. So if I, um, this doesn't mean I've got 4,617 different designs. It just means that, for example, I've got 100 designs and they put them on all the products on Zazzle, which will total up to 4,617 products because I put one design on different products. Um, this is how it works on Zazzle. Now it works a bit different on Redbubble or on Society6 here. So this 243 here shows it's actually 243 designs. For Zazzle it actually shows it um, per product because the upload process for each product is completely separate. Um, which also makes the upload process take a bit longer. But I think yesterday evening, I've, I've, it's actually run through the whole night. And throughout the whole night, I think I've uploaded um, 400 different products. It uh, started, I think yesterday evening when I, when I went to bed, it was like 350. Now it's 750. And yeah, that it took him like 12 hours or so. So this gives you an idea of how long the upload takes. But I've also only selected the medium upload speed here in, in Flying Upload. You can actually increase the upload speed to make it a bit faster, which also consumes a bit more of your, uh, the power of your laptop, you know, and you can't probably then work in parallel. I, I generally leave it running in the background and then work in parallel on other things. And then it works. And it also shows the website that I'm not uploading like an insane speed. So I think that works quite well for me. Have never had a problem. It uploads it really well to Zazzle. And the advantage is, I mean, who else would upload 400 designs in a day or 400 products in a day? If you do it manually, you, you just won't do it, which is why, which is the great advantage of flying upload. I mean, it just gives me the possibility. It gives you a competitive advantage. If you already have lots of designs from Redbubble or whatever, you can just upload them. And this is really the powerful advantage. And the tool also keeps track of what it has uploaded to which platform, which is just priceless. And yeah, so with all my sales I'm making, it certainly paid for the description already, definitely. And if you want to check it out, just check out the link in the description. So hopefully this little tutorial was useful to you. If you liked it, then please smash the like button. And if you want to follow me on my print on demand journey, then please subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.